I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars, and I'm really happy to be back with my 1997 Land Rover Discovery XD. Not only am I excited to drive it because this is such a cool vehicle, but it's really hard to push around, and it'd be really nice if it moved under its own power. If you don't know what a Discovery XD is, go back to my original video where I do a small explanation of what makes this truck special. Last time I put some power to the battery and I determined that the fuel pump is probably not running. I now have a new fuel pump, but before we can get to it, I need to clear the back of the Land Rover out. Fitted to the vehicle right now is a set of Range Rover wheels and I do have the original special wheels that came with this Discovery XD. But they're sitting in the back and, and not only that, but there's also a new driver's door back there. And if that wasn't bad enough, the rear door doesn't even open. So first I need to clear everything out of the back through the side doors and then see if I can get the rear door to open so that I can get to the fuel pump. Here's the situation. When I put this door in here, it barely fit and hiding behind it is all the wheels and tires. It's a common problem on these trucks that the latch gets stuck. No different here. So I'm going to have to open the door from the inside. This is what the special wheels only fitted to the Land Rover XD look like. I'll go over more of these differences when I get the truck running. I'll show you all the features that make the Land Rover XD different from a regular production model. The fuel pump on this model is underneath the carpet right about right here. And to get to it, I will need to get the rear door to open. Looks like the lock is down. I hope that that is the only problem. I'll try the handle on the inside, see if we can get this to open. If not, I'll have to take this door panel off and get into the mechanism, which is right over in this area right here. Seems like the mechanism is still not working correctly. So I'm gonna to have to take this panel off. Hoping that right there is the mechanism. There we go. So if you need to do this, there's a pivot that you can see right here. You need to pry up on this right there and that will unlock the door. See if we can tell why this wasn't working. So when the door shuts, it triggers this up like this. Okay, looks like that worked. Let's try it again. Right now, it looks like it's not there. It's latched fully. Yep, looks like everything works now. I guess it was just stuck from sitting so long. The fuel pump is located underneath the rear carpeting about right here. So first I need to remove this piece of trim so I can pull the carpeting back. Now I'll carefully pull this back from the sides. Our fuel pump is under this cover. There's pretty much nothing left of that screw. It's rusted away. And this one is held in real tight. So I'll grab a vice grip and see if I can get these loose. Looks like the mice have been on top of the fuel pump. 
Let's get everything disconnected. This is the fuel pump with the advanced evaporative loss system. Now I need to get all this vacuumed up. Now I need a hammer and punch to unscrew this. You can't imagine the mouse smell that's coming out from there. I've never seen one stuck this badly before. I may have to get this off off camera and then tell you what I did. I had to cut the ring in half because I couldn't get this loose. Just trying to get the rest of it out of there now. Seems like it wants to spin now. There we go. Now I can take the pump out. So it has a full tank of fuel. I have a new pump here. I'm going to slip the seal on first. For now, I'm just going to slip it back down into the fuel. Let's connect up the wires so that we can see if the pump works or if we have some other electrical issue with the truck. When I turn the key, I still don't hear a fuel pump. And now if I try to start it, it's not starting anymore. So we definitely have some electrical issues to work through. I'm going to set my multimeter to test continuity. Now if I touch my two leads together, it beeps. Over here is the fuse box. I'm going to test all these fuses real quick. If it beeps, they're good. That one right there might be bad. good but there is a lot of corrosion on the blades same story here maybe I'll just wiggle them all down here are bigger fuses those are all good the fuse that was relevant in this case is the second one on the left, this 15 amp fuse here. It is a bit corroded, so I'm going to replace this just because this is a very important fuse. Since the starter is not running, I'm going to try the old trick of hitting it with a hammer. I'm also going to tap the solenoid as well, so I'll use a long bolt to get up to it. And the starter does work again now. So this time the hammer trick did work. Another reason why the fuel pump might not be running is because of the inertia switch. It's right here and just push down on the top to reset it. This device here turns off the fuel pump in case of a crash. Located not far from the inertia switch is a fuel pump relay. This is the next item that I need to test. It's definitely pretty dirty down there. Connections still look okay. I just grabbed the relay from Popcorn, my Cheap Truck Challenge Land Rover, which I know is working. We'll pop it in here, see if it makes any difference. I'll turn the key on. Still don't hear the fuel pump. I'm still getting stumped and I know the power from the inertia switch goes directly to the pump. 
So first I'm going to double check and see if there is any power making it here. And if not, I'm going to supply power here and see if the pump runs. The key is turned on, so now I'll probe this, see if it has any power on it. Doesn't look like it does. The white and purple wire here should run directly to the pump. So I'll supply voltage to that now and see if it runs. I've connected a wire up there and I'll touch the other end of this to the positive terminal on the battery. Nothing. Double check that we did have power here. Yep. So I wonder if some animals have ate some wires somewhere. What I've done now is connected up a jump pack so that I can connect the lead supplying power to the fuel pump all on its own. So now when I push down on this, it supplies power to the fuel pump. I hear uh, fuel leaking out everywhere. Let's see what's going on. On this side, here's the fuel line. And up here by the fuel filter, there's a hose. I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but it looks like it's completely gone. Animals probably ate it. This is definitely going to stop me for today. On the other side of the filter, there's another hose, but that one looks to be in okay shape. That's all the further I'm going to be able to go today. With hot wiring the fuel pump like that, I think it would have run if the hose wasn't bad. I still have electrical issues and I need to go look up some more parts in order to continue. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.